All right, AI enthusiast. Now I've been asking myself this question. Why are some people selling their AI agents for $200? Why others are able to charge up to $5,000 for what's essentially doing the same thing? Now, if you analyze well, the main difference is not the AI or the models that we are using. With the LLM node, we can choose any uh, advanced LLM model. And if you take a deep look, you'll find out that the main difference is the value that both of those people are selling. The one selling on a cheaper price is selling basically some boring backend uh, process built with NetN, of course. He has the ability to attach some external uh, services like Google Sheets, Airtable, Telegram, and others. But the one selling it on a higher price, he's selling a fully functional dashboard which looks like a multi-million dollar uh, software. Now, by the end of this video, you learn how to build things uh, like this with low code and be able to sell your AI agents for a higher price. Hello, my name is Elvito if you're new here and I help people automate their repetitive tasks using AI and automations. Now today I'm very happy to share with you this trick on how you can actually uh, make your AI agents high value and sell them on a premium price. And basically we are going to utilize, of course, NetN, and you are going to use this powerful feature, which is called webhook and be able to connect it with our beautiful web UI dashboard that we are going to build. Now, I don't want to go into the psychology on why a client will choose someone who has created a beautiful uh, dashboard over someone who has created maybe a strong uh, backend process, but like the visuality of the solution. Now, for yourself, you can compare someone who has created a good NHN workflow with some Google Sheet around it, where maybe for our use case, we are tracking our competitors with some product links. And you have another sheet where we'll be updating the product price and if it's out of stock or if it's still in stock. Now, if you compare this visual with someone who has created beautiful uh, dashboard where you can see a list of all the competitors, you can sort them each one by one. You can have beautiful and clear insight about each uh, numbers. You can have charts to visualize all the prices very well, like market share and other things. Yourself, you can see that uh, someone with the dashboard will win, even though he can charge a lot, but he will win over someone with just uh, an n and workflow and a Google Sheet. All right, now for a use case, let's first analyze the problem statement I came up with. Basically, e-commerce and retailers, businesses, they struggle to maintain competitive pricing strategies. This is due to manual and time consuming process of monitoring competitor price. Now the traditional uh, methods involves like employees manually visiting competitor uh, websites and recording prices in spreadsheets and analyzing trends without real time insights or actionable uh, intelligence. Now there are some services that are out there that you can pay some monthly subscription, but it's not the best thing because this use case, actually this case scenario will last for your whole business life. So if you want to pay every month some subscription fee, uh, you can go ahead and do it, but it's not the best way if you can build something that can do the same thing for free. Now, as uh, this traditional pricing is not, uh, the process is inefficient. This is why we came up with a solution to actually use N8N to scrape the product pages and get the data, give it to the AI to analyze uh, the product price at the moment, and if it's out of stock and updating our Google Sheets. Now let's dive into, first of all, our N8N2 workflows that we are going to be using and understand them. All right, now the first workflow will be a scheduler workflow, which will be scheduled every eight hours and it will get the competitors uh, product pages and it will get the prices on those product pages and update the Google Sheets of prices uh, based on the new updates. Now it will be scheduled every eight hours and we will then get the competitors list. Basically it's this Google Sheet, the first Google Sheet, which contains the list of competitors. Basically it's the company name and the product link that we want to uh, scrape. Now, after getting the product link, we'll go ahead and loop through all of those products to get our information from the pages. All right, now for the loop uh, node, we'll just, uh, first of all, uh, for each item, we will just use a simple get uh, request 
to fetch everything and scrape all the data that are found on that page. Now for my use case, I'm just using a simple get request to scrape the data on the product page. But if the product page is not scrapable with, with just a simple HTTP get request, you can go ahead and use tools like Epify, which is a very uh, good tools known for its scraping uh, capabilities, or even Fire, Firecrawl, which is a new one, I guess. And you can go ahead and use those two tools and they will help you achieve your scraping. Now, after scraping, as you can see, we have dirty HTML tags that we don't need. We need to go ahead and get only the markdown. That's why we are going to use this markdown node to only get the text that are on top of the pages. All right. Now, after getting the markdown of the product pages, we need to pass it to a, an LLM chain to analyze the content of that page to just uh, output a structured output, which will be the price, the current price, and if it's out of stock. So most of the website, they will show you if the product is really out of stock. And with the data that we just had the, the markdown for, we can give it to a basic LLM chain to analyze it. Now I'm using Google Gemini, which offers some uh, very good free tiers and free requests per day. And I just told it to get me the price. And if it's out of stock with a structured output, it will go ahead and do the job. Now, after that, we need to append to our Google Sheet. We just have uh, to update this Google Sheet, the price tracking one. And that's what we are doing here. We are just getting the, the price tracking and the sheet, which is price tracking. And we update it using the new date and transform it to, to now's date. And we update it also the company name, also with the price and if it's out of stock. All right, now the workflow that I just explained, uh, do all the backend processes, basically scraping all the uh, competitors, product pages and updating our Google Sheet to track all of the prices every eight hours. Now, if you analyze well, this is not actually a good looking product that you can actually sell to companies for a premium price because you just created the Google Sheet and uh, made, of course, a good job of scraping the data every eight hours. It saved us a lot of time, but it not solve the real issue, which is uh, getting the insights and be able to make the decision based on what you are seeing. And that's where uh, dashboards like this come into place. And we are going to see how we can actually create dashboards like this. All right. Now for building our web UI, we are going to use uh, this platform, which is Lovable. Now there are many platforms out there that provides uh, basically creating apps with just uh, chat. And one of the best one is Lovable. You can go ahead and use Firebase. And basically this is the one I chose. And basically we'll give it a prompt. You can give it a single prompt. It can go ahead and do all of the thing that you ask it to do. And if it doesn't do it the way you want, you can reply inside the chat and tell it, okay, change this thing and put this thing there, remove this thing and basically build the application while only chatting without coding anything. All right, now to create an application using Lovable or any other uh, AI chat model that creates application, we just need to make sure uh, we architecture the first prompt very well. Now, for me, I use Claude to create, uh, to help me to create the prompt that I'll give to Lovable and I give it all the information from how the application should look and also how the data it will request and how it will get the response from them. And that is why before we jump into the uh, prompt that we'll give it, we need to understand how we'll be getting our data, how we'll connect our web UI with all the data that we saved on our Google Sheets and use uh, NHN to help us do it. Now we'll be using what we call webhook. If you're not familiar with webhooks, webhooks are <clears throat> like nodes that helps you uh, basically access data from external application. Basically it will like, create a route which can be accessed externally and which is this URL. And basically, if I make any request on this URL externally, it will go ahead and trigger 
this workflow and respond to the webhook with some data. Now for us, we have I already make it active, so it's in production right now. And after getting triggered, we'll get all the rows in the price tracking uh, sheet, basically this sheet containing all the prices and if it's out of stock. Now after that, we'll aggregate all the data that we received from the Google Sheet. And for me, I chose to organize all the data so that I will have the company name and the prices organized, uh, sorted well and organized with timestamp price and is out of stock. I did this because uh, it's better for uh, like charts if you, you want your application to make charts to receive data that are well organized. Now, if you want, you don't need to do that. It's because me, I added it because I have some background in uh, coding. You can just tell uh, Claude, which is designing your prompt, that you'll be receiving data as the way you receive them from Google Sheet. It will go ahead and create an application and add a utility function to transform all of that those data into data that it can uh, send to uh, other utility function and read them. Now, after that, we'll add the respond to hook uh, node and we will tell it to respond to all incoming items. And basically, anytime we hit this route, we will basically get all the items that we uh, requested. All right, so in our prompt, we just have to remember that we have to include uh, the webhook URL. If not, you can do it the same way I built my first application. We are going to rebuild this application. I don't want you to go ahead and think that I spent a lot of time building this. It was actually a few prompts. And as you can see, it's from Lovebo, so you don't have to think that I built it on my own. And we are going to give it the web URL, uh, which is the trigger and also how the data should be, of course, uh, uh, returned and tell it to just uh, create us a prompt to give to Lovable. Now, this is what I did here. I gave it the webhook URL and how the data will be returned is this. And I told it, of course, to create a press tracking uh, dashboard. And here is uh, the full prompt that it, it uh, was able to, uh, to generate, uh, create a sophisticated real-time price tracking dashboard with this data source. Now you can go ahead and add a lot of data source. This is the power of uh, web UI application is that you have access to a lot of, you can have access to a lot of API endpoint. And basically you can choose all the section you want your web UI to have you can maybe use uh, things like Dribbble uh, to maybe steal some design of others or even uh, have some reference from some other people's design. And yeah, it will go ahead and do it. So basically I'm going to copy paste, take this copy and paste it into here. And if you have images, you can attach images of how you want it to look. And I'm just going to click send and let's wait and see how it will create it. All right, now we just finished uh, generating the dashboard. And as you can see, it looks very well. It's not the same as the one, of course, that we built before, but it contains all the information that we need. It was last updated at this time. Uh, it was at 404. And we have our charts data here. We have some smart insights, uh, which uh, it generated very well. Most stable pricing, market trend. The stock alert, one competitor is currently out of stock. It has the pricing overview table where you can see the price changes uh, by percentage. And we can also see the stock status. Now, these are information that are really needed when you are tracking your competitors and price volatility. And yeah, as you can see, with just one prompt, we're able to generate a full functional. I don't know if you can search. It's working. Uh, I don't know if you can export. Well, to export is not working, but we can go ahead and tell it, okay, work on this export and just generate for me a report or maybe trigger another workflow that can go and send it to my Gmail. Now we need to publish this. If I click here and publish, it's going to go ahead and take some few seconds and publish it. Now, while we are waiting for it to be published, 
I need to tell you that this kind of project is not uh, very, very useful for like systems that needs to be scalable or where you, you need to have the thousands of users because we're just using N8N as a backend service and N8N is probably using another uh, simple language to process your data. So I don't know if it can handle a large amount of traffic. That's why it's basically better to build these kind of UIs to uh, businesses that you are immediately selling uh, the uh, the project to. Now let's paste the, the link to see how our web UI looks. Loading dashboards, a very nice looking loader. And yeah, as you can see, it looks well. I think for the way it looked here, it looked uh, the chat was on each side, but I guess it's because of the uh, the responsiveness. But as you can see, it looks very, very nice. All right, now I think we are coming to an end of our today's tutorial and hopefully it gave you some uh, short background on how you can create uh, your own web UIs that you can uh, sell along your N8N uh, workflows. And to recap, the first thing that we need to do is create our N8N uh, workflows as the backend and keep the data somewhere. If you want to keep it in the Google Sheet, you can go ahead and do it. And the second step is to create webhooks that will be responsible of uh, connecting our backend, which is N8N, to our web UI. And we saw how we can do it. The third thing is to take all of those information like webhooks, uh, URL, and the data structure that it's returning, and basically generate a prompt to give to a, an application builder platform like Lovable. We are, I'm just using Cloud to create it. And after it generates the prompt, you can go ahead and view it, maybe modify it, tell it to modify some stuff. And of course, copy and paste it through uh, Lovable. And just uh, in few seconds, you will have your uh, web UI ready. You can go ahead and chat and edit it, remove things that you don't want, add things that you want. And basically, you will have your uh, web UI ready. Now, in the next tutorials, we'll make things a little bit complex. We'll start using database. I'll explain why the way that we are using of using Google Sheet is not the best way when you are handling a lot of data and which are also related. And yeah, basically, we'll use Superbase, which is a cloud already hosted uh, Postgres DB, and it will help us a lot. And you don't have to worry. We'll also do it viably. We we'll just uh, prompt all the uh, queries that we need to create all the tables and we'll, it will go ahead and create them. Now, I think that's all. If you have any issue with uh, uh, today's tutorial, you can go ahead and comment down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share to other AI enthusiasts. If you are interested into uh, things like this, I have this cool community with growing members, 46 members, and this was uh, suggested by one of uh, our community members who suggested that we should start uh, building web UI using Firebase or Lovable, I chose Lovable, and connect them with our N8 and workflows as backend. So that's it. Have a nice weekend and see you in the next one.